Are you a loyal Godfather fan? Then you've come to the right place. This is Take the Cannoli, the Godfather podcast. Here we talk about everything Godfather, from the movies to the effect on our culture. Still going strong 50 years later. Here's your host, author and Godfather expert, Lou Bortone. Hey, it's Lou Bortone, and in this edition of Take the Cannoli, the Godfather podcast, I'm going to answer some of the most frequently asked questions about loyalty and the Godfather and all that good stuff. So let's jump right in. This is a different episode. Typically, we look at scenes from the Godfather and analyze those scenes and talk about behind the scenes of the making of the Godfather. In this case, it's really more of a Q&A, so here we go. Another question I get quite a bit on this podcast is, what are my favorite Godfather quotes and how are they relevant to business today? The most famous quote is obviously, I'm going to make a monopoly, I can't refuse. And that does not necessarily mean putting a horse's head in someone's bed. In the Godfather novel, Mario Puzo talks about how Vito Corleone used irresistible reason in negotiations. He was reasonable, practical, and rational. He was also known as a man of his word, and he would listen to reason. Another one of my favorite quotes from the movie that people ask about a lot is, it's not personal, it's strictly business. And basically that's, don't let emotions cloud your judgment. Be practical. Sometimes you have to think with your head and not your heart. Because at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what's best for the business? It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. And of course, I want to go back to that quote. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But uh, until that day... Accept this justice as a gift on my daughter's wedding day. Gracias. Gracias. Now we know that the Don grants favors in the Godfather movie because favors buy royalty. He wanted people to be in his debt. He created power and influence because of his benevolence, and he basically had friends in high places, politicians, police, judges, etc. And finally, and people ask, why am I so obsessed with the Godfather? <laughs> My obsession with The Godfather started at a very young age when the film was first released. On my birthday in 1972, I was just 11 years old and I saw the movie at a drive-in movie with my parents where I was probably supposed to be long asleep. In any case, it struck me because even though the movie took place in 1945, the characters seemed really real and familiar. Now, I grew up in a very Italian neighborhood with grandparents from Italy. And The Godfather was really the first movie to present Italians in a more authentic way with the emphasis on family, tradition, honor, and of course, loyalty. Now, it was only years later that I discovered that director Francis Ford Coppola saw the movie as a metaphor for business in America with all the money and corruption and lust and power. And then Coppola was basically saying that crime and business are two sides of the same coin. But the emphasis on loyalty in both the Godfather movies and in the real life mafia was what really fascinated me. The power base of the Godfather and the mafia is based on loyalty and trust. Even among thieves, there is a strict code of honor. And much of that is missing in today's business world. And that's why I come back to loyalty as a new currency. All right, while we're on the subject of quotes and Italian grandparents. My grandmother had a few really good ones. And I think she had used to say that a good name is better than riches. That's an Italian proverb. A good name is better than riches because at the end of the day, all you have is your reputation. You have to guard it like gold. My grandmother would also say, tell me with whom you go and I'll tell you who you are. That's like the business maxim that says that you're the result of five people you spend the most time with. So choose your associates carefully and surround yourself with great people. Why do you think loyalty is the new currency? And I say that because loyalty is in such short supply. 
Vivendi reports that 77% of brands could disappear tomorrow and no one would care. Research company Nielsen says that consumer disloyalty is the new normal, with just 8% of people considering themselves to be committed loyalists when it comes to their favorite brands. Even mega brands can fall from grace with just one misstep, so loyalty is becoming more and more rare. Just look at Southwest Airlines and what happened with them recently. Next time I'm looking for a flight and the prices are about the same, I'm gonna think twice about flying Southwest. Brands and businesses need to do a better job at cultivating loyalty among customers, and brands need to become more human. So Fredo Pareto's famous 80-20 rule also applies to consumer loyalty. 80% of a company's profits come from just 20% of its customers, and the probability of selling to an existing customer is 70% while the probability of selling to a new customer is only five to 20%. These days, buyers have access to so much information online that they are firmly in control. So when you're selling a commodity, the difference can come down to just trust and loyalty. And we know that people buy from people they know and trust. So another question I get a lot is, how can we create stronger relationships and drive sales using loyalty? Well, there's another Italian proverb that says that friendship is a plant that must be watered often. And I think that's true of any relationship, including buyer and seller. And I talk a lot about this in this podcast. In the movie, Don Corleone granted favors in return for a vow of friendship and loyalty. You remember the first scene where he says, someday and that day may never come, I may call upon you to do a service with me. Now we know, especially from the novel, that the Don piled up favors for years and built a wall of friendship. So how can we do that? You want to be there for people in their time of need. You want to become the go-to resource for getting things done and solving problems. And that way you'll develop a reputation as a fixer and as a person who can be counted on in times of trouble. And this is how you make meaning, meaningful connections and develop trust and loyalty. Not only do you have to be top of mind, you also have to be the first and best choice. And if someone happens to owe you a favor, all the better. Another question I get when I talk about trust is that I say that trust is an asset and favors by loyalty. So let me expand on that a little bit. There's a quote that sounds like it could have come right out of the Godfather movie and it says, the most expensive thing in the world is trust. It can take years to earn and just a matter of seconds to lose. Now, obviously you have to build trust over time. That's it for this Q and A edition of the Godfather podcast. Join us again next week when we'll be looking at more scenes from the Godfather and some outtakes as well and rare footage. And we'll see you then. You can find all of the Godfather podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, my YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks and ciao for now. Thanks for listening to Take the Cannoli, the Godfather podcast with Lou Borton. Join us again next time. We know what's good for you. The base.